You're listening to The Virtuous Mind, a podcast from Providence Christian College that discusses all facets of the human experience and the liberal arts from a biblical worldview. I'm your host, Dr. David E. Alexander. How much money will I make? Most college graduates will ask this question as they embark on their professional endeavors. While profit and fiscal stability are essential to succeeding in the free market, the allure of riches can become a snare and an idol if one's affections are not paramountly grounded in Christ and His Word. How can young people pursue financial success and monetary gain while simultaneously seeking to honor and serve the Lord in their vocational settings? Joining us on today's episode is Brandon Addison, Assistant Professor of Business Administration at Providence Christian College. In addition to being a teacher, Addison is a Providence alumnus and utilizes his experience both as a professor and a Providence graduate to help college students navigate their spiritual priorities as they pursue their careers. Brandon, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Dr. Alexander. Can you give us some insight into how young people can seek God first while still desiring profit for their labor? You know, that's a, that's a great question, Dr. Alexander. Uh, You know, in high school geometry, I would despondently wonder, when am I ever going to use this? And it's a refrain that continued with me into college when I looked to get pesky prerequisites completed as quickly as possible. I viewed my education as a means to an end or an instrument. In other words, get a degree so I can get a job doing what I want, making the money I want to do the things I want to do. Learning was just a necessary evil to be endured on my way to the job and the salary I wanted. I was oblivious to how counterproductive my attitude was to my goals and how inconsistent it was with my faith. Along these lines, uh, there's, a, there's a really good book called The Fifth Discipline by a man named Peter Senge, and he notes how modernity's new material and economic abundance impacts the relationship between learning and work. He says, material affluence for the majority has gradually shifted people's orientation from an instrumental view of work, where work was a means to an end, to a more, quote, sacred, quote, view of work, where people seek the intrinsic benefits of work. So when subsistence required painstaking work to survive, the purpose of work was to stay warm with a full stomach. And this is the instrumental view of work. But in an age where our stomachs are full and we are warm and can sit in air-conditioned rooms, our work is more and more removed from our obvious need for survival. And Senge makes this observation as part of an argument for why organizations should become more learning-oriented and achieve, in his words, quote, their highest aspirations. This, quote, sacred view of work, Senge says, requires that people and organizations focus on learning about the complex systems in the world. Such learning is both existentially satisfying and economically productive. Without a sacred view of work, people's vocations become aimless drudgery and organizations atrophy. Later on, Senge argues and seeks to define how organizations can develop their vision and purpose in reaching these higher aspirations. Here's his important quote. By purpose, I mean an individual sense of why he or she is alive. No one could prove or disprove the statement that human beings have purpose. It would be fruitless even to engage the debate. But as a working premise, the idea has great power. One implication is that happiness may be most directly a result of living consistently with your purpose. Now, for a book with much wisdom and inspiration, it's surprising to find such a central element of the book's thesis rooted in nihilism. For example, an addict can be highly motivated to score their next high and be living, quote, consistently with their purpose by stealing from friends and family. 
This utilitarian definition of purpose leads into a slavery of our own desires, the very curse that Christian theology describes as sin. Fulfillment is not found in self-constructed purpose, but rather in God's purposes for creation. One's vocation, teacher, lawyer, doctor, homemaker, plumber, farmer, the list goes on. All of these things are tools that God uses to demonstrate his goodness, beauty, and redemption in the world. Humanity is created to care for and tend God's creation. Sin does pervert creation, but it does not subvert God's care or sovereignty over it. The Apostle Paul explains how this is a fulfillment of the gospel message in Colossians 1, 16-20. He says, For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Now, all things have been created by and for Jesus. That includes high school geometry and prerequisites that we have to take. And Jesus has reconciled all these things by his blood. This is why, in direct application of this reality, Paul charges Christians in Colossians 3.23, quote, Whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men. Now, coming back to Senge, Peter Senge is right. Modern people need and crave a sacred view of work. The problem for Senge's thesis is that nihilism cannot ground purpose or meaning. Scripture, however, grounds work with divine significance. The psalmist teaches us to pray, twice as a matter of fact, establish the work of our hands in Psalm 90, because humanity is imbued with a sacred calling to work as God's ambassadors on earth. Learning and work, therefore, are not primarily instruments to feed my own desires. Instead, learning and work are means by which God graciously accomplishes his purposes in the world. Such a perspective imbues what may appear to be menial tasks, like those geometry proofs, with cosmic importance. It also undergirds and further illuminates Senge's observation that, quote, happiness may be most directly a result of living consistently with your purpose. You see, one's individual purpose is grounded in God's purposes in the world, which then allows us to anchor our individual gifts and interests in God's divine purposes. Within business, economics, and entrepreneurship at Providence, such a theological foundation fuels the pursuit of learning about God's world in the realm of business. Not primarily as a means to a high salary and a comfortable job, but out of a heart of worship and wonder. As Jesus teaches in Mark 6, therefore do not be anxious saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear. For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Food, drink, and clothing are human necessities. Jesus does not denigrate these things or the concerns that may arise from them. But he teaches us that as we seek God's kingdom, our needs will be met. And it is with this confidence and conviction that we pursue the study of business and develop graduates who seek to positively impact their church, community, and world by the grace of God. You've been listening to The Virtuous Mind, a podcast from Providence Christian College. The mission of Providence Christian College as a reformed Christian institution is to equip students to be firmly grounded in biblical truth, thoroughly educated in the liberal arts, and fully engaged in their church, their community, and the world for the glory of God and for service to humanity. We'd love to have you visit our campus. Providence Christian College is now accepting applications for the upcoming semester. 
Contact an admissions counselor to learn more. Visit ProvidenceCC.edu.